Um, it looks like Squirrel and Thornton may both be playing the slot. Um, can can you get both of those guys into the rotation playing the same position? Do you worried at all about that? Uh, absolutely. You can get both of those guys in the same time. Um, I think another thing that you got to be conscious of, of is having guys be able to play multiple spots because you want your best players on the field. Whether those two are in that group or whoever, you got to have some guys play multiple spots. It allows you to do that. And how are their skill sets different? Um, I think just, you know, body type for one, body makeup. Dante is 6'5", 205, 210. Squirrel's 5'8", he's around 170 now. Um, I think, you know, body type, there's a big difference. Uh, both those guys have the ability to run. Um, Squirrel is more of a vertical guy. Uh, Dante can run. He adds a little bit more lateral, a um, little bit more on the line of scrimmage. But both those guys have a unique skill set that we're going to have to take advantage of this year, and it will help us win. Coach, I had mentioned the Jazz um, and um, I guess it was the other one. Uh, Caleb uh, made some plays. What exactly have you seen in the scrimmage? What exactly have you seen from them so far in camp? A uh, bunch of growth out of those two guys, uh, a ton of growth. I think those two guys did a good job of observing. The older guys that were ahead of them last year, um, you can see some of that start to play out now uh, in the way they're moving around. Um, they're both gaining more confidence. And I think as we continue to finish this spring, you'll see those guys make more plays. Rob? Coach, just um, <clears throat> Nathan Leacock as, as a freshman, how, how big of a jump is it? Jump start is he being able to get coming in early, having the ball practice? What are you seeing from him? He's uh he's been awesome. Also, he's been a guy that that kind of stands out physically. He's absolutely gifted, like extremely gifted physically. Um, Nate's biggest thing and what he's starting to do and areas he's starting to grow in is more of the mental detail technique piece. So as a wide out uh, man, I can't be you know, all athlete and get open in his league. Uh, there is a method to the madness. You got to be a technician. You got to be detail oriented in your work. And that allows you to create separation against some of the guys you'll face in this league. So um, he is a physical specimen. He's done a great job last couple of practices of starting to hone in on detail. And you see it play, play out on days like today. Ryan you kind of touched on Dante. What what have your impressions of him been overall so far? Has he been you know what you expected skill set wise, and just how's he had, you know kind of got settled into the offense so far? I think skill set wise, the tape that we saw before we got him showed you had a skill set. Uh, usually, when you get transfer transfer guys, it's trying to understand the person. Uh, Dante has been phenomenal because he's all football. He loves it. Uh, he's in the building all the time. Uh, he's the first one in, the last one out. Uh, he's coming here in between classes trying to get extra work. Um, even when, you know, days that he hadn't practiced it, per se, he, he's the most excited guy on the sideline helping coach other guys up. So um, I've been pleased with, with him all the way through. Uh, coach, kind of given what Ramel Keaton was able to do last year, just what have you seen out of him, kind of his growth this spring and, and his, has his approach changed at all? R Ramel is a savvy veteran. He uh, He's all ball. He's done a great job of taking a leadership role. He's been more of a quiet guy, just natural. Um, and I think he, he's seen himself emerge into that leadership role because he's seen a lot of football. Uh, in that room, he's seen the most ball. Um, he's been here the most. Uh, and it shows on a level of play in situations where bullets are flying and other guys may get, you know, out of whack, Ramel's cool, calm, and collected, and that allows him to make plays in those situations. So he's been awesome. Coach Cedric and Jalen obviously gone, but what about from a production value? What do you expect your unit to be able to do this year, especially with that offense as the way it moves? I think that's to be seen. I think that's why you got to stay in it. I think part of the word process is you never know what the end product will be. Uh, we can start hot and, you know, not have the type of work ethic we want and things go the opposite way. Uh, we could start not the way we want to and start to work and prepare the right way and get things going. But I think that's always to be seen. My main focus isn't really the end result or production. Um, I just want to see these kids operate. I want to see them build habits because uh, those are ultimately what's going to take over when, when bullets are flying. Year two, as the wide receiver coach, how much more comfortable are you in your position? Um. <clears throat> I would say at this level, like, you never want to feel comfortable. Um, I think a continuous pr pursuit of growth is, is what I try to maintain. Uh, I feel like in this league alone, man, it, it, if you feel comfortable in an instant, 
um, you're probably getting worse. So for me, it's to continue to be aware of my players, what they need, put pressure on myself to get that to them every day. Adam and Vince. At slot, again, Valus played that position one way, Jalen played it another way. Do you, do you like that challenge? Do you enjoy sort of molding the position to different players' skill sets? I think offensive football is all about molding your players. Right, you talk about Vailis, and he was a bigger slide. He's five eleven, six feet, two hundred ten pounds, built like a running back. He's the toughest guy in the world. Um, I think Jalen was, you know, ten four and hundred meter in high school, long strider, completely different skill set. Uh, even further, you that at said who's six three, two hundred ten pounds. He's a fifty fifty ball guy. He don't jump like Jalen, big catch radius, but. As an offensive coach, you have to tailor your system and what you do around the skill set of your players. Uh, I think even more, I think us being able to be successful with a bunch of different body types and a bunch of different skill sets shows recruits. Man, it don't matter what I look like. These guys can put me in position to win, and they can help me get to where I want to get to. Cameron Seldon is starting out with the running backs, but obviously has the versatility of, of you know helping you guys out potentially at some point too. Did you lobby to get that specimen out with the, your wide receiver group? And, and if if not, do you maybe get to work with him in terms of some routes in case you do need him in the pass game? Absolutely, we're always lobbying for for athletes in the wide receiver room. Uh, but you know, ultimately, what's better for the team? And um, he's doing a great job at that position, mastering that. Once he masters it, we can move him on to some other things. So he's done a phenomenal job of, of catching on and, and kind of getting things the way they are. Knowing how important the tight end position is in this offense, how comfortable are you guys in going four wide if needed? I think that ultimately that's a great question. I think ultimately that comes down to matchups. If we feel like we got a better matchup with a tight end and we got guys that can go in and fill that void, if we feel like getting four wide receivers and ten personnel on the field, we got multiple guys in the room that can fill that, that void. Um, I think that's, that's part of the answer I had earlier when you're an offensive-minded coach. It's not about what we want to do as coaches. It's how can we put our players in position to be successful? Um, and that's going to be our, our, our method here until the end of it. Coach, you, you talked about Chaz a little bit early on. Uh, he was a guy that coaches and players have said it has, has a really high ceiling, chance to be a really good player. Hasn't seen, we haven't seen him play very much. What, what can he be, and what, how would you kind of detail his growth over his, his first year and plus year? Um, I think Chaz has a shot to be really special. Um, his vers versatility is the reason that he has that shot. Um, you can line him up on the outside. He's smart enough to play slot. Uh, he's nimble enough to get in the slot and make people miss and work through traffic. He has a big enough catch radius on the outside to hold a point and go get balls down the field. Um, for him, he's grown mentally. He's starting to, uh, to develop a dominant trait, a uh, mental dominant trait, it's similar to the one you saw Sed have where um, man, he just wants the ball in his hands. Um, as a receiver coming from high school to college, especially in a setting like this, that trait a lot of times has to be developed because you're playing against guys as you come into college. You're playing against guys who are probably more – physically superior. Um, he's got more confidence in himself and is shown on the field. So uh, we've been pleased with him this spring for sure. You said Ramel is taking on a leadership role. Has anyone else taken on a leadership role and why? Absolutely. Uh, a bunch of guys that stick out. Brew McCoy, uh, Jack Jancic is one that is a phenomenal leader. Um, you mark my words, he'll be an awesome coach one day, like elite coach. Um, but our guys, I think, you know, I tell them all the time, leadership a lot of times calls you. Uh, you know, even when you aren't ready or you feel like you aren't ready, you know, if the group needs you to step up and do something, we got to be willing and selfless enough to go do that for the greater good of everybody. So uh, it's been a bunch of guys step up and lead. Those are just a few. All right. Thank you, Coach. Awesome. Thank you, guys.